Hello, I'm Sal Mercagliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, uh, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct professor in Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Uh, it is April 7th. I'm going to stop doing parts because we're running out of part numbers here for what's going on in the Suez. Instead, we'll start putting dates on this. I think that'll be easier. So uh, not a lot of change with what's going on in the Suez today. Uh, as we know, yesterday, a lot of excitement. Uh, uh, Italian tanker lost its propulsion on the way northbound in the lower section of the Suez, uh, causing the other vessels behind it to have to stop uh, with uh, several vessels touching the bank or shore. Uh, vessels are not designed to stop on a moment's notice. So one of the things we saw right there, the Rumford was ba able to basically get underway, get into the Great Bitter Lake uh, after a few hours and uh, after uh, a few hours in the lake, able to get underway again and clear herself off. So a little bit of a disruption, uh, not uncommon, but it leads to a bigger issue that I think is going on. Uh, I want to share with you a couple of stories uh, that have been kind of in the news here. Uh, this is from G Captain. Again, this is a site I go to a lot. There's a lot of sites out there for you to choose from, but uh, I tend to choose G Captain. I know John Conrad, the uh, CEO. I've had him on here before. So we have a relationship, but uh, there's plenty of other ones out there. But this one is the, the story I want to talk about here. Bad fuel site of this MSC container ship breaks down en route to Los Angeles. So this is a trend we've seen happening here quite a bit. We've seen this happen before. Uh, earlier this month, we saw a breakdown, the Maersk Eureka right here. Uh, she uh, experienced a uh, breakdown. Uh, in a very similar manner. She was uh, also having uh, issues. Uh, there she is, uh, the Marisi Rica, which was broken down off the coach, uh, co coast of uh, Alaska, right off Dutch Harbor there. Uh, she had a breakdown and now we see the same thing happening here with uh, the MSC uh, Ariana. This is the Mediterranean Shipping Company. Uh, that goes in concert with what just happened in the Suez with the Italian tanker. Now we don't know what caused the Italian tanker to lose propulsion. But fuel is a potential issue. We've been seeing this kind of on the fringes here. So this story is out of Forbes. It was several months ago this came out, this story. Uh, and this uh, December, uh, way back in December, so last year, this, this came out. Uh, and started talking about the issues with the very low sulfur fuel oil, VLSFO, that's what that is, or the Frankenstein fuel. Uh, and uh, there were issues associated with it. And one of the things you see here is a lot of those issues that are associated with it. The story goes into details about it. But basically one of the issues you have is when you shift over to this low sulfur diesel, a lot of the components and engines that have been using sulfur rich fuel get soaked with it. Uh, gaskets, seals, you name it. And if you don't change those seals out, you can have leaks. Uh, without the sulfur in it, it causes a problem within the, the, the gaskets and the seals. And what we're seeing right now is that potential issue. We don't know what happened on every given yet. Remember, the Suez Canal Authority is doing their investigation. All these competing agencies are doing their investigations. Uh, the Suez Canal will probably be done first, come out with their uh, report, which I'm going to use my clairvoyance and tell you the Suez Canal had no <laughs> responsibilities at all in the accident that took place. Uh, they're going to blame the company, they'll blame the master, they'll blame everybody but the Suez Canal Authority for that. Uh, remember, the Suez Canal Authority wants a billion dollars. I should have a uh, meme here with, uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Evil right now uh, uh, doing the one billion dollars uh, for the release of the vessel. Uh, so that's going to come out. But I think this fuel issue is, is, again, something we're seeing a lot of right now. We're seeing breakdowns. We're seeing vessels lose propulsion. And again, losing propulsion, whether you're in the Suez Canal or in the North Pacific, is not a good thing to happen. Uh, when uh, vessels lose propulsion in the North Pacific, uh, it's one of the roughest oceans in the world. Remember, the Pacific is twice the size of the Atlantic. So if you think the North Atlantic is, is a rough ocean, the North Pacific magnifies that. Uh, these tall container vessels, large stacks, are susceptible to rolling, to uh, forces on them that can cause collapses. We saw this with ONE Apis, which had the collapse of its containers, lost 1,300 containers on board. The rest of the stack had collapsed onto itself. So all these issues 
associated with the bad fuel uh, that we're seeing here could all relate back to this issue. And again, this all comes from an implementation of IMO 2020, which was the new fuel standard going in. But understand there are new efforts to create even more strict fuel standards coming forward. IMO 2025, IMO 2030, uh, IMO 2050. Uh, you are experimenting now with entirely new fuels, uh, everything from ammonia to hybrid power to uh, uh, other other types of uh, fuel. We'll do a whole special on it. It's, it's, I'm not a fuel expert by any means, uh, but there's a lot out there. Uh, and, and again, it's trying to cut down the emissions uh, for the vessels. In particularly, one of the things that they want to do is cut down emissions when the vessels are in port uh, because they dump so much uh, um, carbon dioxide and sulfur into the atmosphere. It's one of the reasons why you see a lot of vessels shifting over to LNG, liquefied natural gas. They don't have enough liquefied natural gas to power the vessel, but they can power them in coastal waters and when alongside the berth, so they're burning cleaner fuel. They're not emitting as much pollutants going in. If you want to see where the pollutants come, imagine taking 20,000 boxes off a vessel and have a line of truck, tractor trailers and trucks in your port to take those boxes off. That's what you see. It's what you see right now in Los Angeles and Long Beach. Uh, it's one of the biggest issues that we see happening with the ports right now. Anyway, thought I'd let you know, I'll link over to these articles, the G-Captain article, articles here, and I'll also give you the Forbes article here on the Frankenstein fuel and, and the issues associated with it. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch over the next couple of weeks. Do we see more vessels having fuel problems, uh, breakdowns? Again, uh, this is all uh, a big transition over. And inland waterway ships have transitioned over to this and they experienced that. I know in the United States, we had inland water tugs and barges and coastal vessels have to do this and they experienced a lot of these problems. Same thing with uh, diesel trains and, and large uh, uh, construction material when they had to shift fuels over. Uh, a lot of this uh, should have played out in the marine side, but it doesn't appear to be. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Anyway, your latest edition of what's going on in the Suez. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And remember, subscribe, like, share with friends, let people know. I've got a video up I just did with Cal Maritime, uh, the California State Maritime Academy on strategic sea lift in the US Merchant Marine, more of a military perspective. Uh, one of the topics I delve into is that. So that's up there if you're interested in that. If not, keep you uh, tuned in here. Uh, we're looking to do something a little different. I'm hoping to have a weekly feature looking at some aspect of the maritime industry every week uh, where I go a little bit more in depth and talk about it. And I'm also hoping to work with G-Captain John Conrad on a weekly wrap-up of uh, this week in maritime news where we look at the big stories, you know, what's the story that got the most hits on G-Captain that week? What story does John want to highlight? What story do I want to highlight? My story will be much more interesting than John's, I guarantee you that. I'm much more interesting than John. Uh, so we'll be able to put that together for you. So I hope to host that on my side and over on GCAPTAIN too. So anyway, stay tuned. And again, appreciate you guys tuning in.